go back to the peach mango pie or the apple mango pie. Apple mango apple mango pie. Apple pie. So which do you think has higher specific heat capacity? The filling inside or the crust covering? lesson we are going to discuss about heat and also specific heat capacity and calorimetry. Now heat again is a transfer of energy from a higher temperature object to a lower temperature object. Take note that heat is not something that an object contains. It is a way of transferring heat again from higher temperature to lower temperature. It's uh, almost the same as work wherein an object doesn't contain work but work is actually a way of transferring energy from one object to another. Okay. So, ganun din yung heat. It's a transit energy from an object which has higher temperature to an object which has lower temperature. One example is when you're drinking a hot coffee, since the coffee has higher temperature compared to the surrounding, therefore, the transfer would be from the coffee to the surrounding. So, there is heat. Now, okay, it is different from internal energy, where in internal energy is a grand total of all energies that the substance has. Now, again, heat is not something that it is contained by the object, but it's transferred between two objects having different temperatures. If we have, for example, object A and B, Let's say they have different, initially they have different temperatures. So where, when they are in thermal contact, there is a transfer of energy. Let's say A has higher temperature compared to B. So energy is transferred from A to B. A will have lesser temperature and then B will have higher temperature compared to the initial temperature of B. So if they are in thermal equilibrium, that means they will have the same temperature. Okay, here it was this was an example this, that I have mentioned yeah? when you're drinking a hot coffee and then the surroundings is cooler then the transfer of energy is from the coffee to the surroundings now why is it that sometimes bibili ka ng apple pie or mango and bibili kayo ng apple pie or mango pie and then you are too excited to eat it tapos kinagat nyo minsan kala nyo hindi na mainit pero Pagkagat nyo yung feeling, sobrang inat pala sa loob. So, why is that so? That can actually be explained by physics. Uh, we'll see later what's the explanation. Yeah. So, I think you're now craving for apple, for peach mango pie or apple pie. And bakit yung feeling niya sa loob, mainit pa, pero yung crust niya, yung pie crust niya, hindi naman na ganun kainit. So, it has something to do about specific heat capacity. When we say specific heat capacity, the definition for that is is the quantity of heat required to change the temperature of a unit mass of the substance by 1 degree Celsius. That is specific heat. So, depending on the object, how much energy does it, does it require to increase its temperature? Have a ceramic mug and a metal cup. When you pour hot water on it and then you touch it, saan mas mabilis uminit? Is it the metal or the ceramic mug? Okay. Of course, your answer is that the metal cup gets hot more easily compared to the ceramic mug. And why is that? So, because of its specific heat capacity. It is also, um, we can also define it as thermal inertia, which is the resistance of a substance to change its temperature. The higher the specific heat capacity, the higher is the quantity of heat required to change its temperature. So, mas matagal siyang uminit. Mas matagal din siyang lumamig. We can coin it with the term thermal inertia, which is the resistance. The higher the specific heat capacity, the higher the resistance of the object to change its temperature. If we will talk about increasing its temperature, yun nga, balik tayo do sa resistance. If the object has, has higher specific heat capacity, that means it has higher thermal inertia. 
it has higher resistance for it to change its temperature. Even if you increase its temperature, mas matagal. When you decrease its temperature, mas matagal because of having a higher thermal inertia or higher specific heat capacity. So when we go back to the peach mango pie or the apple mango pie, apple, man apple mango pie, apple pie, so which do you think has higher specific heat capacity? The filling inside or the crust covering it? Okay, the answer is, okay, the filling inside has higher specific heat capacity compared to the crust covering it because uh, it will take more time for it to cool down unlike yung crust sa labas niya. Kaya kala nyo, malamig na rin yung loob pero hindi pa pala because of its higher specific heat capacity. Another application is when you are on the beach or when you are at the beach. Yung at daytime, sobrang init ng buhangin. It's summertime, uh, sobrang init. At daytime, sobrang init ng buhangin. Pero pag pumunta ka na doon sa water or doon sa uh, ingay ng airplane, okay, at daytime, sobrang init ng buhangin. Pero doon sa tubig, malamig-lamig. But, during night time, what do you observe? Malamig na yung buhangin, pero dun sa water, mainit pa. Which do you think has higher specific heat capacity? Okay, the one with higher specific heat capacity is the water. Or you see water. Because at daytime, it will take a lot of energy or more energy for it to increase its temperature. At night time naman, it will be longer for it to cool down. So, mas matagal siyang bumaba yung kanyang temperature. Unlike, sa sun has lower specific heat capacity. Therefore, at daytime, it will take a smaller amount of energy compared to water for it to increase its temperature. At night time, mas mabilis din siyang mag-cool down. So, those are applications of specific heat capacity so that you can understand the term better. Now, your experiment. Have you performed this experiment? Now, I want you to analyze that experiment using specific heat capacity. Okay, now let us discuss about quantity of heat. The quantity of heat, Q, we use Q is equal to M, which is the mass. C is the specific heat capacity. And delta T, which is the change in temperature. The change in temperature, we have final temperature minus the initial temperature. We can express the amount of heat, we can express it in joules, or in kilocalories, or in calories, depending on the unit of your specific heat capacity. Okay, delta T, if the heat is absorbed by the object, therefore delta T is positive. The final temperature is higher than the initial temperature. But, if the object releases heat, the final temperature is, of course, lower than the initial temperature of the object. So we can use this one. If Q and delta T is pos greater than zero or positive, heat enters the body and its temperature increases. So, so that is endothermic. Heat is uh, absorbed by the object. If Q and delta T is less than zero or negative, that means heat leaves the system or heat is released by the system and we call that exothermic process. We can also relate potential energy to heat. For example, work can also be converted into heat. Before, when we maybe when you discuss mechanics, uh, we don't consider thermal energy. Uh, we just consider from potential energy to, to kinetic energy. But in reality, it could be converted to heat. So one example is this one. One half of the potential energy can actually be converted to thermal energy. Here is one problem that we have. Um, a certain amount of heat will warm 1 gram of material A by 3 Celsius degree and 1 gram of material B by 4 Celsius degree. Which material has the greater specific heat capacity? Okay, which do you think? They have the same masses, it's, they are both 1 gram, pero the material A has increased its temperature only 3 Celsius degree. 
you is naman by 4 Celsius degree. So that means material A has higher thermal resistance. So mas matagal siya magtaas ng temperature. Thus, thermal A has higher specific heat capacity. Okay? Uh, we'll do problem solving. Okay, now let us discuss about calorimetry. Calorimetry is a way to measure the heat exchange from one object to another. So, as its definition, quantitative measurement of heat exchange, and it employs the method of mixtures, wherein you will combine those two objects for us to be able to analyze which releases heat, and which absorbs heat. Then we have here a calorimeter. Ang calorimeter natin is a well insulated can. Usually it's made up of aluminum. So you have here a steering stick. And then my butas yan where we can insert the thermometer. And then we have air space. We have the inner calorimeter. And then we have air space here. We have inner calorimeter here, then the outer calorimeter. They are separated by here, yung mga blank na yan. They are separated by air space to minimize the transfer of heat to the surroundings. Then, of course, we have an insulated lid. lid. And para hindi makarilis, hindi siya open so that it will not release or absorb heat from the surrounding. How do we do it? Why method of mixtures? For example, you have a sample metal. Then it's heated to a certain temperature. And then let's say you have water here. You have to know the initial temperature of the water. Then you insert the metal. Then you measure the final temperature of the mixture. After they um, attain thermal equilibrium. That's how you use calorimeter to describe the heat exchange. So again, calorimeter is a well insulated so that a minimal amount of heat is exchanged with the outside surroundings. If the system is completely isolated, no energy can flow into or out of the system because of the conservation of energy. Therefore, the heat gain by one object is equal to the heat loss by another. Going back to our example, let's have metal sample and then lalagay sa submerge sa water. But of course, calorie, the inner calorimeter will also affect the heat exchange. So, saan dun ang nag-release ng heat? Okay, the metal sample, which was a higher, at a higher temperature, of course, releases heat. And then, the, the one absorbing heat, they are the calorimeter and the inner calorimeter and also the water will absorb heat. So, yeah, heat gained by the water plus the heat gained by the calorimeter equals the heat loss by the metal sample. Anyway, I'll give you sample problems so that this will be clearer. Yeah, heat loss plus heat gained should always be equal to zero.